I'm Doug Maitland. I'm with the Ohio Department of Transportation, their Office of Real Estate, and we are discussing Module 7 of the Value Finding Module Series. And Module 7 is a continuation of the case study. In this module, we are going to talk about the appraisal scoping checklist. This module focuses on filling out the appraisal scoping checklist for Parcel 1 of Butler 73, 13.05. And completing the appraisal scoping checklist allows ODOT to comply with the federal requirements in 49 CFR 24.103A. And those requirements are the agency acquiring real property has a legitimate role in contributing to the appraisal process, especially in developing the scope of work and defining the appraisal problem. The scope of work and the development of an appraisal under these requirements depends on the complexity of the appraisal problem. The agency must contribute to the appraisal process, especially in developing the scope of work and defining the appraisal problem. Two, the agency has the responsibility to assure that the appraisals it obtains are relevant to its program needs, reflect established and commonly accepted federal and federally assisted program appraisal practice, and at a minimum complies with the definition of appraisal in 24.2A3 and the five following requirements. This rule tells us that the agency must assure that the appraisals it obtains are relevant to its program needs and reflect established and commonly accepted appraisal practice. So these regulations require ODOT to participate in defining the evaluation problem, developing the scope of work needed for the valuation problem, which was based on the complexity of the valuation problem, and assuring that the appraisals ODOT receives are relevant to its program needs. ODOT uses the appraisal scoping checklist to implement those above referenced regulations. The appraisal scoping checklist is used by ODOT to document the complexity of the valuation assignment, and it must be completed at the beginning of the valuation assignment on all parcels where an estimate of compensation is needed. This would include the value analysis report, the value finding report, and the right-of-way appraisal report. The appraisal scoping checklist is used by ODOT as a meaningful assessment of the pertinent issues surrounding the severance of the part taken from the whole so that all parties agree about the issues that need to be addressed in the appraisal, the scope of work needed for that, and the valuation problem. And here's what the appraisal scoping checklist looks like. It's a two-page form, pretty standardized, shouldn't be too difficult to fill out. All right, so we're going to start working on the appraisal scoping checklist as a continuation of the case study, Parcel 1, of the Butler 73 project that we've been working on in the last several modules. Okay, we're going to start by filling in the top part, which is the owner's name. And here's a blow-up of the top part. We can get that from the summary sheet on the right-of-way plans or from the title report. The summary sheet says Parcel 1 is owned by Shannon Lance Douglas and Laurier Barker. And so based on that information, we insert it into the owner's name. So you can see the project's name that came from the summary sheet on the side of the slide. It's Butler 73, 13.05. So County's Butler, Route is 73, the section's 13.05. The parcel number is 1WD and 1T, and the PID, also from the plans, is 1020509. All right, next we're going to talk about appraisal scope. Here's a blow up of that section. In appraisal scope, if you go to the right of the slide, you're going to see that you're going to have to choose an item. So if you open that window up, what you're going to see is your choice is partial, total, and C comment. We're going to say that it is a partial acquisition. That's correct. It's a small little strip tape from along State Route 73. All right, next, ownership. We're going to blow that up. So first, we're going to talk about whole parcel determination is complex. And so we go over and we have the choice of choosing an item. And if we open that up, the choice is yes, no, not applicable, see comments. The answer is no. 
the whole property is not determined to be a complex issue. Next, it's asking us if an RE95 is going to be required. An RE95 documents the improvements in the take area. It documents if the improvements are personal property or real property, and it identifies who owns those improvements. Improvements that are identified as personal property are not included in the appraisal, but will be moved as a relocation benefit. And for those improvements that are identified as real property, a contributory value of those improvements is going to be determined in the appraisal process, and an offer of compensation is going to include those improvements. To provide both relocation benefits for an improvement and then also to pay compensation for those items is double compensation. And that is forbidden under 49 CFR Part 24. That's why an RE95 is important if there are improvements in the take area. Improvements classified as real property and that are owned by a tenant require an estimate of contributory value and an estimate of salvage value. Under the acquisition regulations, tenant owners will receive a separate offer of compensation, which is the greater of contributory value or salvage value. The RE95 must be signed by all owners of any improvements in the take area, and it's also going to be signed by the agent completing the form. Back to the ownership. Is an RE95 required? The answer to that is yes, we got uh, improvements in the take area. Next question, is an RE22-1 apportionment required? And an RE22-1 is used to allocate the total estimated compensation between a tenant owner of the real property improvement and a fee owner. The allocation is based on the signed RE95 documenting that all parties agree to the varying ownership interests. And so going back to the ownership, do we need a 22-1? And the answer is no. The Barkers, have, there are no tenant owners. The Barkers own everything. Next, with ownership, title report has non-typical appraisal issues. Does it, have, does it identify ownership issues with tenants? Does it show that the ownership is fractured? Does it show that there are easements that are not typical? And the answer to that is no. Everything on that title report is pretty typical. All right, so next on the scoping list is the regulation. Blow that up. The first question that's asked is significant zoning or legal regulations that are impacting the acquisition. We go to choose an item and we open that up and the window says the answer is yes, the answer is no, not applicable or see comments. So with zoning, we shouldn't be guessing. We should be studying the zoning and making an analysis and a determination as part of the appraisal scoping checklist. We did some research. And so to find zoning, we went to Butler County zoning maps because this property is in Butler County. It's available online. And from the zoning resolution that is in Wayne Township, Butler County, also available online, we found that the property is zoned A1. A1 means it's reserved land for agricultural cultivation and very low density residential and other activities that are rural in character. Under the zoning code, the minimum lot size is two acres for residential, having a minimum frontage of 200 front feet, a minimum yard depth of 40 feet, a side yard depth of 25 feet, and a rear yard depth of 50 feet. And the lot coverage cannot exceed 20%. If we look at the property we're appraising and focusing on does it meet the criteria of a minimum lot size of two acres, parcel one before the take had 5.042 acres in gross, 0. 0.405 acres was encumbered with PRO, which left us with a net area of 4.637 acres. After the take, uh, the residue contains 4.637 acres and the take was 0. 0.149 acres which was the net take, leaving the residue at 4.488 acres. So the residue clearly exceeds the minimum size requirements. Front yard depth requirement is 40 feet, and as measured from the right-of-way line to the house, before the take, it was 70 feet, and after the take, it was 60 feet. So the setback from the front yard exceeds the 40-foot threshold. Rear yard setbacks are unchanged by the WD taking, so that's not an issue. 
and improvements on the residue don't exceed the 20% threshold for lot coverage. So in conclusion, there's no apparent issues to the residue with respect to zoning. So we go up there to the regulation portion of the scope checklist and say, no, there's no issues. A second question they're asking is the property, the property is not compliant with zoning regulations in the before and the after. And the answer to that is no, the, the property is compliant both before and after the take. The next one is the right of way and construction plans. Blow that up. When we open the window, our choices are yes, no, not applicable, see comments. So question one, significant improvements are in the acquisition or are impacted? And our answer to that is no, there, there are no significant improvements like a structure, like, like a house, like a barn or anything. What is in the take area, though, is fencing, stone pillars, a wall, drive, and, and some trees. The second question, are significant impact to site improvement? And the answer to that would be yes, because we're taking those site improvements. The next question is significant utilities. Well, septic service lines are in the acquisition area or are impacted, and the answer to that is no, they're not. Finally, significant issues due to elevation change, topography, or floodplain, and the answer to that is no. Getting back to the front page of the appraisal scoping checklist, we are now in the conclusion section, and we're going to blow that one up. So the first question is, parcel acquisition cost, $10,000, meaning it's a VA limit, or is it $65,000 limit, which is for the VF? To answer that question, we brought up the drive detail. And that dotted red line shows the existing right-of-way line. Solid red line shows the new right-of-way line. The take, the net take area is between those two lines. And so there's fencing that's being taken. There's a stone pillar and wall on the left side of the driveway that's being taken. There's a stone pillar and wall on the right side of the drive that's being taken. There's an entry gate that's attached to that wall and pillar that's being taken. And those blue lines show the concrete drive that's being taken that is in the net take area. So that drive is being taken. Those improvements are easily going to exceed $10,000, but they'll probably be less than $65,000. So the answer on this question is the acquisition is going to be less than $65,000. Next question is anticipated damages uh, such as access, proximity, internal circuity, change to highest and best use. Are any of those issues of damages expected? And so when we open up the window, the answer, we, we can choose from yes, no, not applicable, or see comments. And we don't think there's going to be any anticipated damages. Next, cost to cure. Should it be considered? We are going to consider replacing the fencing, the gate, and the drive entry structure to provide security on this property like it had before the taking. And so the answer to this is yes. Next question is a specialized report needed for parking, drainage, security. Should any of that be considered? And the answer to that would be no. And finally, the last question is, what is the appraisal format conclusion? The choice when we open up the windows is a VA without with review, a VA without review, a value finding appraisal report, a full-blown before and after, a limited scope that's before only, a limited scope that's land only. And in this case, it's pretty clear that the value finding appraisal report is the appropriate format. The next section to be filled out on the scoping checklist is an explanation of the appraisal problem. And here's a blow up of that section. It says, include a discussion of any yes responses above. What we've done is we have filled out the scoping checklist to, to point and we're seeing if there's any yes answers in there. And so there's a yes answer there about site improvements. And so there has to be discussion about site improvements. Some of the site improvements encroach into the existing right of way. And so the acquiring agency is going to make the determination as to how the encroachment should be treated in the appraisal. And so here's our explanation on explanation of the appraisal problem. The net WD taking is a narrow strip take approximately 10 feet wide along the State Route 73 frontage. The T-taking abuts the WD-taking and is also a narrow strip. 
the gross WD acquisition also takes the remaining property rights in the PRO. Within the take area is a large amount of fencing, an entry gate with stone walls and pillars at the entry drive, part of the concrete drive and scattered trees. The drive width and access to State Route 73 remains unchanged. The rural residential character of the property remains unchanged with the residue. There are no apparent adverse effects to the residue as a result of the WD and T tapings. The valuation problem is considered uncomplicated, but due to the nature of site improvements taken, compensation will most likely exceed 10,000, but be less than $65,000. The appropriate valuation format is the value finding appraisal report. Special instruction. A small portion of the stone wall and pillars that are at the drive entry adjacent to both sides of the drive encroach into the existing right-of-way. Also, some small sections of fencing may encroach into the existing right-of-way. The appraiser shall disregard. And the last part of the appraisal scoping checklist are signatures. Here's the blow-up of the signature area. Top is where the district real estate administrator or their designee would sign followed by the review appraiser. It's usually signed by the review appraiser. The reviewer usually assists the agency in determining the valuation problem, the scope of work necessary, and if the anticipated compensation is going to be $10,000 or less, $65,000 or less, or more than $65,000. And the last signature is that of the appraiser. It's going to be signed by the appraiser who's going to complete the value finding report. In the case of a value finding, the appraiser agrees that the valuation problem is uncomplicated, that there are no apparent damages as a result of the WD and T takings, and that the VF report format is the appropriate scope of work necessary for the acquisition and is in agreement that the anticipated compensation is going to be $65,000 or less. It's time for a knowledge check.